Today we'll look at how to make Nastrian run faster. We'll begin by looking at our system resources. Looking at the system information for my hardware, we can see that I have 12 processors and 128 gig of RAM. We also need to look at how much free disk space is available as well as the type of drive. Solid state drives are much faster than the old spindle type drives. Here we can see I have more free disk space on my D drive. Both my C and D drives are solid state. When Nastrian is running, it needs to write temporary files. Nastrian may not run successfully if there's not enough free disk space. It can run faster when it's writing to a solid state drive. Make sure you specify a scratch directory where there is enough space on your fastest drive. By default, Nastran will only run on one processor. We can make it run a lot faster by letting it use more processors. Here, I'll let Nastran use 8 of my 12 processors. Since this is a good idea for every Nastran run, let's set it in customer defaults. By default, Nastran uses an estimate to determine how much memory to use. Sometimes this estimate can be too small, which can lead to longer solve times. To ensure Nastrian has enough memory to avoid swapping and run as fast as it can, it's best to specify how much memory we will allow Nastrian to use. Since I have 128 gig of RAM, I'll use 100. Since this is a good idea for every Nastrian run, let's set it in the customer defaults as well. We can reduce run times by reducing the output requests. Output requests can also be specified in customer defaults or directly in the solution. For certain types of models that consist primarily of solid elements and have a load on one end and a constraint on the other, the element iterative solver can greatly reduce the time that it takes Nastrian to run. In the demonstration, we'll create a solid tetrahedral mesh on a connecting rod with one million nodes and compare the run times for the default settings to the go fast settings for memory, scratch, SMP, output requests, and the element iterative solver. For this model, runtime is reduced by an order of magnitude. A normal mode solution can benefit from most of these settings. In addition, RD modes can reduce runtimes even further. To run a normal mode solution with RD modes, we first need to set an RD scale parameter. We also need to specify an upper frequency limit on the Lanchos card. In the demonstration, we'll create a solid tetrahedral mesh on a connecting rod with 280,000 nodes and compare the run times for the default settings to the go fast settings for memory, scratch, SMP, output requests, and RD modes. This model runs seven times faster. RD modes can have an effect on accuracy. Here, when RD scale is set to 5, results correlate well to the modes generated with the default settings. However, if we set RD scale to 1 in hopes of getting better performance, we can see its effect on runtime is negligible, but its effect on accuracy is significant, especially for the higher modes for this model. Next, we'll look at all the button clicks that are required to set up the default and go fast models. We'll begin by opening up our connecting rod and we'll create our simulation models. Next, we'll create a linear static solution that will show our default settings. So here I'm not making any modifications to the solution setup or the solver parameters. Next we'll mesh the model with an element size that will generate about a million nodes. Here I'll pause the video while it's meshing. It takes about a minute or so to generate the mesh. And here you can see we have generated a mesh with over a million nodes. Next we'll assign a physical property material to the mesh in the mesh collector. 
Next we'll deactivate the subcase and create a fixed translation constraint on one side of the model. And a load on the other side. All right, so at this point we're ready to solve, which we won't do, but the solution takes a little under 17 minutes to run. Next, we'll edit our customer defaults so that every new solution we create will get the new GoFast solution settings. This will happen automatically when we create new solutions after we restart, after we create our customer defaults. So here we'll go to Nastran, Solver Parameters, and since there isn't a line for parallel, we'll put in an additional keyword, parallel equals 8 so that we'll be using SMP8. We'll also set our memory and if you're wondering about the format, if we hesitate on the question mark, you can see some examples of how you can set that memory. And lastly, we'll set our scratch directory. Alright, so here you can see that will take effect next time we restart. We're not going to restart now though. One of the things that we could do as well in customer defaults is set our output requests. Now since I have different output requests that I like for different solutions I'm not going to make any changes to it. We'll keep that as our default. Alright, so since we didn't restart when we create a new solution we're going to have to edit our parameters to set those same settings. So here we've cloned our solution. We'll edit our solver parameters to put in our memory and our SMP and scratch. Alright, and one other setting which is going to help a lot is the element iterative solver. Here we'll turn that on in the general section. And here you can see we have the default output requests. And to go a little bit faster, maybe we only need stress and displacement. So here I'll clone our structural output request and here you can see everything else that we have on that we don't want so we'll go ahead and turn that off our SPC forces our grid point forces and our force requests and that will leave us with just displacement and stress so at this point we're ready to solve which we won't, but our solve time now has been reduced by an order of magnitude down to a little over one and a half minutes. Alright, so next we'll edit our mesh to drop the number of nodes down to about a quarter million and we'll create a new solution. This will be our modal solution with our defaults. So we'll specify that we want the first 250 modes and we're taking our defaults for our structural output requests. and the defaults for our step. Alright here, let's make sure that our solver parameters are also set to our defaults and we're ready to solve, which we won't do. But this one takes just over 18 minutes to run. Next we'll clone the solution and put in our go fast parameters.
So first we'll put in our parameters for memory, scratch, and SMP. And then we'll add parameters for RD modes and we'll limit our output requests. Both of these are done in the case control section. Here I'll go ahead and clone my output requests. We'll call this just displacement. It's the only thing that we want, so we'll turn off everything else, which was force, grid point force, SPC force, and stress. And here we can check to make sure we just have displacement. All right, so that looks good. Next, for our Lanchos data, since we're going to be using an RD scale and RD modes, we need to specify an upper limit for our frequency range. So I'll put that in, and then we'll specify our RD scale. Here we have five. I'll go ahead and add that, and we'll say OK. All right, so at this point, we're ready to solve, which we won't. But now it runs seven times faster and takes only two and a half minutes. So those are some settings that will help Nastran to run faster. Please feel free to leave a comment with your favorite settings.